ओके चैप्टर एटीन वर्स ट्वेंटी नो कृष्णा विल डिस्कस नॉलेज इन थ्री मोड्स सर्वभूतेशु ये नैक भाव अभ्यमीक्षते अभिभक्त विभक्त तज्ञानम विधि सत्विक विधि तत्सात्विक दट नॉलेज बै विच वन अंडिवेड स्पिरीचुअल नेचर इज सीन इन आल लिविंग एंटिटी दो दे आर डिवाइडेड इन टू इन्यूमरेबल फॉर्म्स वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड टू बी इन द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस सो देर इज वन अंडिवाइडेड स्पिरिचुअल नेचर ओके दर्पट a person who sees one spirit soul in every living being whether a demigod human being animal bird beast aquatic or plant possesses knowledge in the mode of goodness one spirit soul why only one spirit soul hmm because okay, spirit soul is part and parcel of krishna there are no different spirit souls hmm they are all qualitatively one in all living entities one spirit soul is there although they have different bodies in terms of their previous work as described in the 7th chapter the manifestation of the living force in every body is due to the superior nature of the supreme lord meaning that this living force is present in the body because the supreme lord has facilitated this is allowed this to happen hmm thus to see that one supreme superior nature that living force in every body is to see in the mode of goodness so when we see every jeeva we should see that every jeeva has the same atma uh, is not that different atmas are different when we start thinking about atmas as being different then we are in the mode of passion knowledge in the mode of passion the living energy is imperishable although the bodies are perishable differences are per- perceived in terms of body because there are many forms of material existence in conditional life the living force appears to be divided such impersonal knowledge is an aspect of self realization hmm. Hmm. impersonal knowledge meaning that it is same it is one actually hmm. here only impersonal knowledge apl- <laughs> is applicable hmm. so there is only one atma hmm bro i have a doubt uh, which atma is being talked about here is it super soul because our individual souls are different right individual souls are still qualitatively one oh we are talking about quality yeah it is the same thing no that is why we say we are one with the supreme lord doesn't mean that we are quantitatively one hmm we are all coming from the same source right which is why the whole spiritual world is actually krishna whole material world is also krishna yeah hmm see that is why there is who sees one spirit soul in every living being now parmatma anyway is the is the same now atma also see atma though has been separated uh um, eternally they just separated right but qualitatively they are the same yeah mm-hmm. that is why saying though they are divided into innumerable innumerable forms right so living entities are multiple forms they are divided into innumerable forms but those forms is just because we have chosen to get those forms hmm but there is a undivided spiritual nature that is why here nature is there no yeah yeah quality hmm so here he explains the other part pratvena tu yagnanam nana bhavam pratakvidhan veti sarveshu bhuteshu tadnanam vidhi rajasam that knowledge by which one sees that in every different body there is a different type of living entity hmm Uh, understand to be in the mode of goodness see that is why type means what some in the body of a dog there is a different type of jiva in the body of a human there is a different type of jiva oh uh, qualitatively they are all one same 
concept that the material body is a living entity and that with destruction of the body the consciousness is also destroyed is called knowledge in the mode of passion so if it becomes different then propa is saying when you think about that there are different types of living entities that means that that consciousness will also get destroyed because now in the next body that we acquire which will be a different type of body then there has to be a new type of jiva so that means that the soul is also dying hmm according to that knowledge bodies differ from one another because of the development of different types of consciousness otherwise there is no separate soul which manifests consciousness so this is this theory mode of passion they think that there is no separate soul um is all developed uh, consciousness developed based on the body and body itself here the body is itself the soul there is no separate soul beyond the body hmm. according to such knowledge consciousness is temporary or else there are no individual souls but there is an all pervading soul is a parmatma which is full of knowledge and the body is a manifestation of temporary ignorance so there are various interpretations of this theory or beyond this body there is no special individual or supreme soul uh, propa is saying there are multiple conceptions all these are considered in the product are products of mode of passion generally this concept that body is different but the soul nature of the soul is same because it is qualitatively one with krishna and that is goodness anything else this is passion ignorance anyway and next verse he says they don't even know na yat krishna vade kasmin karye saktam ahitukam atatvartha badalpam cha tadat tat tamasam udaratam mm, that knowledge by which one is attached to one kind of work as all in all without knowledge of the truth no well, they don't know anything about all this they don't bothered about this soul body and all that they are just engaged in work uh, and even that uh, work without knowledge is true and which is very meager uh, that work is also not some i think that is getting adjective for work very meager is said to be in the mode of darkness the knowledge of the common man is always in the mode of darkness because every living entity in conditional life is born into the mode of ignorance one who does not develop knowledge through the authorities or spiritual injunctions has knowledge that is limited to the body so when one has knowledge limited to the body he is just engaged in work that's all hmm he is not concerned about acting in terms of directions of scripture for him god is money and knowledge means satisfaction of bodily demands so we can understand the whole world as knowledge in the mode of ignorance such knowledge has no connection with the absolute truth I mean, more or less like knowledge of ordinary animals knowledge is eating sleeping mating defending such knowledge is described here as in mode of darkness in other words knowledge concerning spirit soul beyond the body is called knowledge in the mode of goodness knowledge producing many theories and doctrines by dint of mundane logic and mental speculation is product of mode of passion knowledge concerned only with keeping the body's com- body comfortable is said to be in the mode of ignorance so clearly propad is separated so a uh, knowledge concerning atma gnan is out of goodness and um, producing many theories uh, all kind of theories about atma and deha is mode of passion mental speculation and when those concerned with just body they don't even bother about the soul there is knowledge in the mode of ignorance नियतम संगरहितम अराग द्वेष तकृत अफल प्रेप्सु न कर्म यत्सात्विक उच्यते नो ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट एक्शन नो नो नॉलेज नेक्स्ट एक्शन देन डूअर दैट एक्शन व्हिच इज रेगुलेटेड एंड व्हिच इज परफॉर्मड विदाउट अटैचमेंट विदाउट लव और हेट्रेड विदाउट डिजायर फॉर फूड रिजल्ट्स ही सेट टू विन द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस सो बीइंग इक्विपॉइज्ड without love hatred etc is in mode of goodness hmm? and importantly here it is regulated activity not whimsical activity regulated occupation duties as prescribed in scriptures in terms of different orders varna ashrama performed without attachment and uh, therefore without any love or hatred performed in krishna consciousness oh. <laughs> 
um, for satisfaction of the supreme now that is because varnashrama is meant for pleasing vishnu only so proper has added um, for the satisfaction of the supreme hmm and without self satisfaction or self gratification are called actions in the mode of goodness so then one can question saying that you know because if it is then for satisfaction of supreme why is it not bhakti that is because this is just karma this is still karma and this will become karma yoga if it when it gets connected uh bhakti is only now with the bhakti directly actions of um nine ways of nine methods of devotional service is only bhakti anything else is karma or gnana with some yoga okay yattu kame psuna karma sahankarena vapuna kriyate bahula yasam tadraja samudahritam action performed with great effort hmm by one seeking to gratify his desires and enacted from a sense of false ego mode of passion now we just the nature of work in the material world pretty much great effort gratify desire enhanced from enacted from a sense of false ego anubandham chayam himsam anapeksha cha paurusham moha daragyate karma yatat tamasam uchyate that action performed in illusion disregard of scriptural injunctions without concern for future bondage or for violence or distress caused to others said to be the mode of ignorance so kaliyuga is a combination of passion and ignorance because disregard is there so it is ignorance but it's also done with great effort so it is passion one has to give account of one's actions to the state or agents of the supreme lord called yamadutas irresponsible work is destructive because it destroys the regulative principles of scriptural injunction it is often based on violence and is distressing to other living entities such irresponsible work is carried out in the light of one personal experience it is called illusion personal experience means that no consideration of scriptures and all such illusory work is a product of mode of ignorance i think it's easy to understand any questions action in three modes is clear i think okay mukta sango na ham vaadi driti utsaha usamanvitah siddha siddhyor nirvikarah karta satvika uchyate one who performs his duty without association with the modes of material nature now this is kartru performer of work without association with modes without false ego with great determination and enthusiasm without wavering in success or failure this has to be a worker in the mode of goodness hmm hmm actually okay this one we, i think we should understand it as without association means without uh, mukta sanga uh, not attached uh, without false ego great determination enthusiasm without wavering in success or failure person krishna consciousness is always transcendental to material modes uh, he has no expectations from result of the work entrusted to him because he is above false ego and pride still he is always enthusiastic till completion of such work he does not worry about the distress undertaken he is always enthusiastic he does not care for success or failure he is equal in both such a worker situated in mode of goodness so here you can see um, somewhat you can either call it mode of goodness or if the work is directly uh, in bhakti then you can call that he is transcended the modes also um, because bhakti is also not performed in any of the modes bhakti is also um trans prakti transcends the modes here though the discussion is about uh specific modes propad in the purport is also saying that it is not just enough if one is in the mode of goodness um, he can still do karma yoga um but because there is propensity to do karma uh, it is still in the uh, mode of goodness till he comes to completely uh, doing offering it to krishna but here um 
there is no it is not that it is being done for krishna it is just being done without false ego great determination enthusiasm without wavering in success or failure but when it is offered to krishna then it becomes transcend the modes uh, but till uh, the results are offered to krishna um, if the worker is not uh, offering the results to krishna then he will still be in the modes रागी कर्म फल प्रेप्सुर्लुब्धो हिंसात्मको शुचि हर्षशोकान्वित कर्ता राजस परिकीर्ति कीर्ति वर्कर् अटैच टू वर्क एंड फ्रूट्स ऑफ वर्क डिजैर टू एंजॉय दोज फ्रूट्स ग्रीडी इन व्यस इम प्यूर मोड बै जॉइंट सरो इज मोड ऑफ पैशन सो दिस इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड पैशन एंड इग्नोरेन्स आर इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड आल द गुडने मो डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ मोड्स ऑफ गुडने प्रोपात कैंड ऑफ मिक्स सट विथ krishna consciousness so it becomes confusing sometimes A person is too too much attached to certain kind of work or result because is too much attachment for materialism or earth and home wife and children such a person has no desire for higher elevation simply concerned with making this world as materially comfortable as possible generally very greedy thinks that anything attained by him is permanent never to be lost is envious of others prepared to do anything wrong for sense gratification therefore such a person is unclean does not care whether his earning is pure or impure very happy if his work is successful very much distressed when his work is not successful such is the worker in mode of passion again most people are in the mode of passion ayukta prakrata stabdha shatho naikritiko lasaha vishadi dirga sutri cha karta tamas uchate worker who is always engaged in work against the injections of scripture materialistic obstinate cheating expert in insulting others lazy morose procrastinating is said to be in the mode of ignorance scripture injunctions we find what sort of work should be performed and what sort of work should not be performed those who do not care for these injunctions engage in work not to be done and such persons are generally materialistic to work according to the modes of nature not according to the injunctions of the scripture such workers are not very gentle and generally they are always cunning and expert in insulting others now uh, and this we see at work hmm you will just don't care they just want to get stuff done that's all they very lazy even though they have some duty they do not do it properly not all of them again there are different types of people in mode of ignorance also Uh, so they procrastinate therefore they appear to be morose uh, any key and and they procrastinate such workers are situated in the mode of ignorance mm, okay buddher bedam tu teshchaiva gunatas trividham shunu prochyamanam asheshena pratakvena dhananjaya now please listen as i tell you in detail of the different kinds of understanding and determination so this is very very important hmm. action worker knowledge we understand okay knowledge is anyway theoretical we understand atma body all this um action we know that we should not do anything in the mode of passion ignorance that also is easy to understand if we do in the mode of goodness then we become a worker in the mode of goodness so that's also easy to understand hmm now this is a practical application pravrittim cha nivrittim cha karya karye bhaya bhaye bandham moksham cha ya veti buddhi sappartha satviki that understanding by which one knows what ought to be done and what ought not to be done what is to be feared and what is not to be feared what is binding and what is liberating is in the mode of goodness See, there is a difference between knowledge and understanding knowledge is just tatva understanding is application hmm the application in practical life is we should know what is right what is not right what is to be feared what is not to be feared what is binding what is liberating hmm so pravrittim cha nivrittim cha pravritti means performing actions according to scriptures and actions which are not so directed not to be performed nivritti 
one who does not know the scriptural directions becomes entangled in actions and reactions of work understanding which discriminates by intelligence so basically we should know right and wrong hmm? and for us you know for this we have to understand whole of dharma and all that uh, for devotees we should just simply understand we should transcend the modes do everything based on anukulisa sankalpa pratikulisa varjanam it takes care of this whole understanding business um, but there also anukulisa sankalpa pratikulisa varjanam requires little bit intelligence and little bit um purity of mind purity of purpose if we are trying to cheat ourselves then we will not be able to evaluate what is whether something is favorable to bhakti or for bhakti or not um, but if we are uh, pure in intent Uh, then we can easily understand okay this is not good this is good so let me do this mm, so we don't have to worry we don't have to worry so much about this instruction ya dharmam madharmam cha karyam cha karyam eva cha ayathavat prajanati buddhi sappartha rajasi this understanding they not distinguish between religion and religion and between action that should be done should not be done is in the mode of passion अधर्म धर्म मनते Hmm. The Prabhupada is saying intelligence in the mode of ignorance is always working in the opposite way. Hmm. A man in ignorance understands a great soul to be a common man, common man to be a great soul. I think truth to be untruth, untruth to be truth. They simply take the wrong path. Okay. Hmm. Most important verse: Ritya yaya dhara yate manapraane indriya kriya. योगे नाव्यपिचारिण्यामिनेशन विच इज अनब्रेकबल विच इज सस्टेन विथ स्टेटफास्टनेस बै योग प्राक्टिस एंड विच दस कंट्रोल एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द माइंड लाइफ एंड सेंसेस इज डिटर्मिनेशन इन द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस सो डिवोटी नीड्स टू डेवलप डिटर्मिनेशन इन द मोड ऑफ गुडनेस सो दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड फॉर प्राक्टिकल अप्लीकेशन one is steadily fixed in a supreme soul with determination concentrating one's mind life sensory activity in supreme engages in krishna consciousness that sort of determination is the mode of goodness hmm abhivicharinya that means those who engage in krishna consciousness are never deviated by any other activity so steadfast determination to practice bhakti hmm actually last class we were discussing about this unfavorable situations how to handle uh, when we said that uh, any uh, offense to guru or krishna or devotees and devotee should normally retort uh, actually the smartness here i was thinking about this because yeah on one end if somebody is blaspheming then we should not keep quiet on the other end we should try to create a situation such that this blaspheming does not happen <clears throat> and this is an art hmm this is an art hmm so and for for doing that also it requires determination because it's very very difficult keeps pushing us to a corner every time situation in a game we have to become determined hmm we have to make sure that we figure out ways and means by which we keep people out of uh blaspheming mode so for example hmm see like we think about fishima like propa's sister her husband was eating fish <clears throat> she never complained she simply went on doing her duty whatever is required for husband done and she was doing her bhakti so husband got what he wanted uh, she got what she wanted and then that's it no question of any blasphemy Hmm. Oh, that requires determination because you are reading in the shastra. Okay, fish should not be eaten. Non-veg. Okay, but you are cooking and offer giving. 
might also develop a distaste to even cooking or seeing but she was just doing it and that is a higher level of determination hmm steadfast by yoga practice because i have to practice yoga i want to make sure that no situation comes in the way at the same time i want to pre- pre- prevent people from uh blaspheming uh, how do i manage it uh, sometimes we will have might have to be artificial like vasudeva uh and glorifies kamsa <laughs> first chapter and <laughs> we read that right first chapter of uh, krishna book uh he glorifying kamsa saying oh you are the best among the boga boja propa says sometimes devotees have to do these kind of things mm. why to prevent difficult situations uh, for all this we require this determination most important difficult situations uh yeah i mean bad health monetary problems relationship problems all of this requires us to be steady that fastly fixed hmm and control the mind life and senses because mind will go crazy but to control saying that no it is not krishna conscious so i want to get fixed in krishna consciousness so i will and manage everything such that situation becomes conducive actually he see you actually this is very very important just contemplate on this by going aggressive you are not going to achieve anything in any situation hmm huh? again i'm going back to vasudeva and kamsa vasudeva first he became angry he held kamsa's hand saying that you know i am also kshatriya i also know how to take out my sword like that but suddenly his intelligence came in and he said no this is not going to help i have to use higher intelligence because kamsa cannot think kamsa is his bodily platform uh, so then he goes to more is you know he thinks from a intelligent way and he you know appreciates uh, he is like glorifying kamsa at that, at that time he becomes calm he is able to think clearly he comes up with a brilliant solution right uh, just think about it your problem is not with devaki why are you killing her so with, with her children i will surrender everybody now he did not think at that time oh when son is born now what should i do how will i protect no he just said current situation i have to overcome that's it future krishna will take care hmm so this fearlessness also is determination that's also mode of goodness oh the most important verse actually each and every aspect of our life we should apply this then we can remain fixed bro i have a question hmm. um when we say determination right uh, mm-hmm. it looks very artificial that uh, once by its own strength has to do this steadfastness right because ultimately we don't have any strength oh. so is it is it acquired due to no, why we don't have strength why we don't oh. have strength in the sense that we uh, we are under the influence of modes right and no. sometimes mode of ignorance is uh, heavy oh, no 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 devotees should not be thinking like this devotees should never think that we are in the control of the modes we might be in the control of the modes but we are in the shelter of krishna when we have come into the center of krishna we going under the modes is our desire to go under the modes and that requires determination not to get succumb not to succumb to situations see if all this was not, if nothing was there in our hands then what is this i mean krishna is playing fun with us ha ah, just put us into more under the modes and then he is seeing the fun hai aisa nahi na to free will hai to apply free will what do you require do you require determination yeah but sometimes we forget right that we are in the shelter of krishna like that forgetfulness is there we then we remember oh yes we forgot krishna at this moment so my point is that even to i think but prabhupada is speaking in particular about remembering krishna right and that is the determination we are talking about so mm, everything now remembering krishna is the first level you have to remember krishna but even after remembering krishna we may not be able to apply it 
Mm. See, determination is all across. I'm saying this is just meditate on this determination business. Okay. Start to end everything Krishna consciousness in material world in a environment which is so, especially for grastas, right? So much of difficulty requires us to apply ourselves in this mode of determination and mode of goodness. Start to end. Starting from remembering, remembering instructions, developing determination to apply those. Being smart to figure out alternate ways which will not which will not create more obstacles. All of this requires determination and steadfastness. Mm. And even if we fail in this process, determination to continue. I think that yeah. is more yeah. important. Determination to continue. So, like I said, start to end of everything we are doing in bhakti is based on this particular verse. Yeah. So my question was like, what is the practical way to achieve this determination? Is it like we should pray to Krishna or is it a result of one's mercy of uh, Guru Maharaj? Everything. No, everything. As in, see, there is no one single, there's no one single direction for this, right? See, obviously first we should have the desire. We don't have the desire saying that, uh, like, so for example, you know, if we are in a difficult situation and I don't, Intend to really solve that. I don't want to solve it. Uh, Krishna will not bother. We will not pray. Nothing will happen. Right? Uh, first thing is for us to understand what is right, what is wrong. Okay, this is not, doesn't seem to be okay. But okay, if I go uh, in this way, this is going to create more problems. No, wanting to solve that problem in a way that will be favorable to Krishna consciousness is the first level. Hmm? Then we think now based on Guru Sadhu Shastra. So we've heard so much of Shastra. We'll think, okay, this situation happens. This is what I should be doing. Okay, this is clear from the Shastra. This is what I should be doing. Then we think, okay, mm, first time we try. Okay, this has to be done. But we are not able to apply. Second time we try, we're not able to apply. Then... We will surrender to Krishna saying, Krishna, you please give me strength. I have tried, uh, but I am not able to overcome this. Hmm? I fall at Krishna's feet. Then when we pray for mercy, mercy will come from Guru, from Krishna, everybody. But then we will not have determination. I, What I have seen in my own practice is lack of this determination to stay away from trouble. We succumb to the situation. That is our main problem. Actually, mm. not getting mercy is the easiest. If we just beg for it, it will, Krishna, Guru will give the mercy. Hmm? Sometimes Krishna will hold back to see how determined we are. He'll hold back. Hmm. And that is if we want pure devotional service, this life, no other, no more waste of time and we are completely fixed. Krishna might not immediately bestow at times. That also requires determination. And that we continue tate nukampa susamikshamana that we wait for Krishna's mercy. Krishna, I only you. Please give me mercy. Suffer, mm-hmm. suffer, suffer, suffer. Keep waiting for mercy. Brahma says such a person becomes the rightful heir to enter Vaikuntha. Again, determination. Mm. Mm. This thing is super powerful, super powerful. I mean, this is one of the earliest verses I got stuck on to saying, boss, if this is not there, then I'm not going to make any progress. Yeah. Actually, it's quite simple, no, Prabhu, because last class what we read, do whatever pleases Krishna. That is the question that we have to ask ourselves. Yeah, so if we yeah. get into that sort of a position in life, consciously, you know, always thinking this is the right thing that I do. Whenever you're on a crossroads, you can just stop and think and I think uh, that will put us on the right path. Mm, yeah, but it, uh, the whole thing is, you know, your mind is clear. You're able to do this uh, which means possibly maybe you're in the mode of goodness, so it makes things very easy. For people who are stuck in mode of passion and ignorance, who are still trying to practice bhakti, there are a lot of challenges. It's not so easy. Sometimes 
uh, and it's also like this you know each and every each of us have our own anarthas to overcome mm-hmm. some of the easy ones like say okay don't drink tea coffee okay done no determination required we just dropped it like a hat right but then as we make progress to deeper and deeper anarthas we go into deeper aspects of our own self which we don't even know exists which will you know uh, uncover itself later and pose such huge challenges i mean i'm facing this i know what this is okay i mean there could be one or two things which will really hold us back badly uh one example is just attachment on keeping this body alive how many of us here are attached to keeping this body alive you want to keep the body alive oh, hmm? attachment moha are we ready to give up give up body it's not so simple because krishna is saying yeah, this body is temporary why are you worried your atma there are deeper and deeper i mean today where we are yes when we just look at things from a practical perspective we will feel like ah okay it's fine but when we enter the next level of you know purification we get stuck badly attachment to body attachment to health attachment to money for example tomorrow everything is taken away whole money is gone can we think what we will do hmm or i mean you see in so many people their relations just you know unfortunate one accident gone i mean see we at a very okay i mean day to day kind of level we can understand okay uh, i should not do this oh, that's fine uh, but when we get into those deeper attachments that we have from which we have to get out we have to get out of these attachments then determination is required otherwise we will fail miserably and the, even with determination we will fail miserably uh, like uh, prabha prabhu is asking then then obviously we completely depend on mercy of guru and krishna but we try we put some effort from our side to whatever extent is possible hmm oh it's while it might sound simple it's not so simple if it is simple for somebody and they are able to get over all these temporary attachments to body relations money etc amazing i mean you are really blessed you are a great soul you already i mean you're on your way back right nothing nothing can stop you but most of us are not at that level we struggle i think one observation can be applied as uh, what propad wrote in the earlier verse right that um, the enthusiasm doesn't stop until the task is done maybe that can be applied here that even if we fail in our attempts repeatedly we should still have determination with enthusiasm and try right maybe that you know i mean all these things are so theoretical <laughs> why am i saying so theoretical because okay how many of who here have experience we don't have to get into details any problem beyond one or two years same problem consistent problem uh, those could be you know yamini mataji i'm just muting you because there's some background noise coming there um any problem which is consistently remained with you and will remain so one you can just lift your hand you will understand what i'm speaking right i lift my hand i have i am experiencing something consistently irrespective of my how much ever determination how much ever enthusiasm just you know breaks me down at times you know madhuri mataji ram krishna prabhu ram prabhu prabhu so you know when we go through these things consistently consistently over and over and over and over and over and over and over again what really helps all of this just become theoretical exercise what helps there what helps in those situations who can answer sincere cry 
टू द लॉर्ड वो तो हम करेंगे ना डिफिकल्टी में व्हेन वी आर स्टक वी विल ऑब्वियसली क्राई सिंसियरली नोबडी विल आई मीन दैट्स अ गिवन someone who can help uh, what to do in that situation association okay this is the only thing which which can get us out why because that enthusiasm would have dried up in us the determination would have dried up in us it is not that we are not tried we have tried over and over and over and over and over and over and over again somebody else will come and hold us together help us guide us motivate us inspire us and then these things become of practical relevance again so it's not uh, i mean i'm why am i stressing this because it's why bhakti life initially is as in it seems very easy initially uh, and it totally depends on how we where we are in our journey Hmm. but what i have realized is that getting over deeper attachments is huge effort huge effort very fortunate souls say ha huh, okay i am not attached to my body let me i am okay i am ready to give up this body tomorrow and we are far from it and for all that we have to get over it if not today or tomorrow i mean we might be fighting that problem today or we might fight that problem 10 years hence or 50 years hence right whenever it is we have to go through that of course you know when it when it happens in old age then it becomes relatively easier for people um for devotees because we've been practicing for so long okay end of the life yeah, okay body is dwindling okay fine i'll give up attachment to this body hmm Uh, but uh, before that uh, money also when you have need for money and you are struggling i know so many devotees here who faced such challenges and so much of pressure so much of pressure well, then we have to again become determined stay fast yoga not leave the lotus feet of the lord you know practice all this on a day to day basis in the midst of crisis is not very easy hmm so anyway so we'll stop here to so meditate on this determination in mode of goodness extremely important extremely powerful words hmm i'm proper to return a small purport but um, practical application perspective it is like huge anybody else wants to say anything otherwise we'll end here so we didn't get into mode of passion so we need to 33 okay ji okay. oh, are ah, how do we develop determination in mode of goodness ravi how do we determination how will we develop uh, how do we develop uh, okay good question Mm, okay so to answer this i think we need to understand what is determination in mode of passion and ignorance and we make sure okay one answer that i got generally for uh, you know um is grace vidwan gorang prabhu so he said practice to live life in mode of goodness hmm and what does that mean which means that after reading all this bhagavad gita last two three chapters uddhava gita from bhagavatam we make a list of behaviors that are in mode of goodness behaviors in mode of passion behaviors in mode of ignorance and then we see our own life in some aspects we might be in goodness some aspects in ignorance some aspects in passion some aspects by just introspection we can say okay no this is mode of ignorance now i'm going to switch i'll move to propat says in these purport saying that devotee you know by by proper effort one can actually switch the modes right one can move from ignorance to passion passion and of course we are chanting the whole idea of chanting is we have to get spiritual strength which will help us transcend these modes right uh, so by doing bhakti because we are not doing this single as in it's not in silo 
we are practicing bhakti you are doing activities of bhakti bhakti has to give us spiritual strength when we get spiritual strength and we have to note saying that what is the change in behavior we have to bring about we can try by the based on the strength of bhakti then you might say no no prabhupad has said we don't have to separately endeavor by just doing bhakti all of this will come yeah that is for those who are engaged 24 hours in devotion service they don't have to worry about changing their ways and all this right behavior and all that automatically it will change but for most of us who are not 24 hours engaged in devotional service we have to put effort as well hmm now uh, for that the focus needs to be how do i mold myself in the mode of goodness and the most powerful way is to associate with those devotees who are actually functioning in those modes because that association will rub off on us hmm otherwise there is no other way as in if we try to if it is like you know we are stuck we have fallen in a well and we are trying to pull ourselves out of the well that's not possible that's possible for very few most of us we will require somebody to pull us out and that is the person who is in the mode of goodness can help us understand how to live in the mode of goodness so again comes back to power of sangha Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any other thoughts? Okay. Pancha kalpata rubhya chakra pasindu bheva chakra titanam bhavne bhe vaishnavi bheva namo namaha nanta pobhya vaishnavi nanta bhe maveta gaura bhakta vandhi ki jai jagat shri rapa maad ki jai. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Dandava. Thank you very much everybody. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu Hare Krishna Dada Hare Krishna